Dr. Patrick Ijewere is a wellness expert, so he's a medical uh, director, and he's a medical expert, and he's to talk to us about genetically modified crops and foods. Uh, topic that is beginning to generate serious discussion and conversation here in Nigeria about a company known by as Monsanto now doing business or are now allowed to do business in Nigeria. Let's get this conversation running. And I want to understand. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Ijewari, for coming through. Good what morning, this boss sir. was all about on social media. I hardly had a single moment on Saturday and Sunday. Folks are tweeting and tweeting about genetically modified food and crops in Nigeria. Take us through this. What took us about the world of GM crops and foods? The world began in the mid-1990s. Introduction of certain plants that were not the original breed. Science basically took genes from a species that is totally different and forced it into a species of, that's different. For instance, take genes of a horse, force it into that, that of a human. Genes of a spider, force it into that of a cow. Take genes of a bacteria, force it into a tomatoes. These, in God's creation, do not crossbreed. Horses and humans do not crossbreed. Genes do not mix. And so now, for whatever reason, science has found it appropriate to force to crossbreed through what's used, what's called a gene gun, to force genes into a species that doesn't naturally breed. And so when, it, when, when we take that into the world of, of, of crops and, and foods, is it healthy? The science coming out of the U.S. is telling us otherwise. Data is showing that from the mid-1990s to present, as GMOs have entered the marketplace in the U.S. insidiously, you've seen an increase in autoimmune disorders, in cancer, in inflammatory disorders, in children, allergies, asthma, autism. The industry, the industry will tell you that there's no connection. But if you do your research, there's a lot of medical facilities that are saying there's a connection. Now just think of the science. When I take the gene from A and force it into B, there's a lot of mutations that occur. That the one gene I'm moving is not the only gene that goes across. Many others go across. And when you have mutations, that's the basis of cancer. When you force breed also, you're putting a foreign object into the body of someone. The body doesn't want it. Your immune system says, this is a foreign body. Why is it here in me? For example, BT corn. BT corn has a gene inside it that causes the corn to become a pesticide, to produce a chemical that kills the insect. Well, guess what? When we humans consume that same BT corn, that same genetic transfer that, uh, that's in the corn will also occur inside of us. We have billions, trillions of bacteria in our gut. There's a cross transfer into our own bacteria. And so our own body now becomes what? It's a mini pesticide factory. The, 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 the issue about, uh, well, because of time, we need to uh, think, uh, uh, move on quickly. The issue of Monsanto Agri uh, Culture Limited doing business in Nigeria. Where do we come into the entire conversation? As far as we know that in the U.S., uh, the Congress is, is putting a bill to, to President Obama, uh, the African president of the U.S., as to what is going to be done. Well, how do we get involved with this company operating in the U.S., now having its foothold in Nigeria in the business of agriculture, GM crop and food? Okay. 19 EU countries have banned GMO. Across the world, 64 countries. Hello, listen carefully. Common sense tells you, I grow a plant, I plant the seed. Now you tell me, no, stop that process and buy my seeds from Monsanto or a similar company. Each time I want to plant, I must go and buy seed. And they're expensive to start with. Plus, I must use their chemicals, herbicides and pesticides. The cost of agriculture here is going to go up so high. India. Go look at what's happened in India. The data is out there. So there's so much for us to be very cautious when we want to bring in this technology into the farming sector. Boston, each time you want to have a child, do you go to a sperm bank in Europe or, or the US, or do you go borrow gene-modified sperm to have a child each time? That's totally against what our creator has designed for us. So medically, it's concerning. Environmentally, these products, you've got to stop the wind. Once you plant a GM crop, the wind is going to move the pollen across to other fields that are non-GMO. You will cause environmental pollution, which will result in loss about biodiversity. The costs are calamitous. Isn't the, the Ministry of Agriculture on top of this conversation? I hope they are. From some, they are, but I think there's some lack of objectivity in what they are putting forward. Otherwise, 
there would have been no agreement signed until a major nationwide discussion was held on this topic. So Nigeria has signed Monsanto Agriculture to operate in the country as we speak. Credit to the assembly. There is a discussion the National going, assembly. assembly. Yes, there is a discussion going on right now on this topic. But we knew about a few weeks ago there was an agreement signed to license commercialization of GMO products. Now, what are some of these products we're looking at? Perhaps we need to put a warning label on, on screen right now, but let's hold on a bit. What are some of these crops we're looking at or food items uh, under this um, um, genetically modified process? All right. First, I'll tell you the ones in the U.S., then I'll point out the ones that are, we're, we're seeing on our shores here. In the U.S., the major ones are corn, canola, soy, of some alfalfa, some um, popo, papaya. In Nigeria, if you're importing many of these products from the U.S., they are GMO, the ones I just mentioned. Monsanto, Monsanto is quite bright. They look at what are the staple foods in the local environment, and then they modify them. Rice. You've heard of vitamin A rice. It's a GM rice. It's also called golden rice. Now, some people argue that vitamin A cassava is not GMO. The jury is out. I'm going to read the science and know where they got this from. But for now, we give them the benefit of the doubt and say vit cassava vitamin A is not GMO. Golden rice certainly is. If you're bringing in any corn product from the U.S., 95% of corn in the U.S. is GMO. Soy is GMO. Any soy products, be it corn oil, soy, soy oil, canola oil, they are based on GMO. The extracts of those plants, such as high fructose corn syrup, which is a major sweetener, using a lot of drinks today, is of GMO source. In terms of, let's go back to what the National Assembly is doing. What exactly is the issue here? If we have a deal to have Monsanto operate in Nigeria as a company that we showed, so um, uh, what's the National Assembly talking about? Is it to revert the contract or the deal or to uh, make sure that our local way of um, having seeds that are naturally processed and diversified and move from one planting season to the next uh, be the only of the day? Also, you said it succinctly. I hope exactly what you've said is what they're actually doing. I would love to know what is the dialogue going on. What was the prior dialogue? I hope what you've said is what they're actually doing. I can't speak for them. From a medical point of view, you are concerned? Yes. Yes, we are. I have 22-year-old with cancer. Rare cancer. Even rare in the U.S., here in Nigeria. A Nigerian young lady. I have... 28-year-old with multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disorder. Just last week, 42-year-old, multiple sclerosis. We know you are what you eat. What you put in the body factors into your overall health. Look at the data from the U.S. My colleagues who are pediatricians are seeing increasing asthma, increasing allergies. I'm not blaming all of this on GMO, but we know nutrition and what you put in the body is a major factor. Don't we have a national biosafety management agency? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. What does this agency do? What is it supposed to do? They're supposed to analyze this science and give us guidance as to how the Senate and the Assembly should use the information to make laws or decisions. I pray they're doing so. Isn't this agency under the Ministry of Agriculture? Agriculture has, environment has some influence. Both ministries have influence to some degree over the biosafety agency. But what about NAFDAQ? Because if you're bringing foods into Nigeria, you need to pass through that agency for food, drugs, administration, and control. I don't, I hate to say this on live TV, Boston. When I came back to the Nigeria from the U.S., I had a meeting with NAFDAQ and I raised this issue. And the then DG for, food, for the food directorate was quite honest that they had little information on this technology, but they promised to do their work, and... And move on from there. But, you, but you're not really satisfied with what you, what you had from NAFDAQ back then? You, also, you can't be satisfied. You can't be. We have schools, Institute of Technologies. We have... Get these people working. Get them looking at the science. If you can't figure it out in the ministry, you know, get your scientists at these universities, at the schools, to analyze this for you and give you position statements. We are underutilizing our centers of excellence, our universities and our other technological institutes. If you look at research institutes relating to food and agric in Nigeria, um, do you think this is where 
we should be focusing on. Yes. Yes. This is a topic. This is a timely topic. This is a timely science. This is a contemporary science. Give them the tools to do the analysis and begin to train our next generation of scientists. Because this issue is not going away anyway, anyway, anytime soon. Monsanto and, the, and other companies are quite powerful to the point where even in the U.S. So Monsanto is not the only one? No, not the only one. But no. it looks like I mean, the, the big elephant in the room. Bingo. To the point where in the U.S. where studies have shown that 9 out of 10 Americans want labeling on products that have GMO in, the, in them. But guess what? They're so powerful that actually, literally prevented the U.S. Congress or the people from getting such laws passed. Vermont passed such a law. Now, since has passed a law that supersedes Vermont's law. So these are powerful companies. So we should lame GM crops and foods like you label cigarettes. Absolutely. Hazardous to your health. Buyer beware. For those who are in the field of farming and agriculture, let's go back to the traditional way in which we, we, we crop yams and, and prepare some for the next um, uh, planting season. Uh, the same thing with maize and, and, and other uh, beans and what of you. If we continue this traditional way, do you think uh, we'll have a, a leeway here to turn our back on, on GM crops and foods and, and go the traditional way? What do you think the Ministry of Agriculture should do in, in that respect? Okay. When I go to my village, and I also listen to conversations from my colleagues, the issue has always been there's wastage occurring in the village. You go to, you travel through Benway State, on the sides of the road, people are discarding oranges, citrus, mangoes, excess harvest that doesn't get to the city. Our issue is not the production or the cultivation. It's getting the products to the marketplace. It's transportation. Get us a functional rail system to bring the products from the farms to the port or to the cities. We don't need technology that tells me to, I must buy plants, I must buy my seed from, from somebody else. We have seeds enough. But we don't have enough seeds here. We don't have enough seeds to plant the farms, so we've got to import them, aren't we? Awesome. We have seed, though. We have plenty of seeds. I have a colleague who brings um, mangoes. She had abundance to, to, to bring into Lagos. Couldn't find enough buyers for it. And she lost quite a bit of, quite a bit of money. So, so why the propensity then for, for, um, for imported seeds, whether it's maize, corn, whatever? They come with this feared tactic that in 2030, 2050, we will double triple our population and our current farming methods will not feed the population. Therefore, we must now jump into their science. The recent occurrence in, in the north about the um, tuta, the, the Ebola, tomato, tomatoes of Ebola, that tomatoes is not an indigenous tomatoes. It's a hybrid tomatoes. If you go and get our indigenous tomatoes, those viruses or, or bacteria or pests do not bother those the tomatoes. Plus, again, look at the soil. If you overuse the soil, the soil is weak. Therefore, the immune system in the plant is weak. Therefore, they're easily ravaged by flying pests, by little things that they cough or sneeze. Agriculture is a totality of the system. It starts with the health of the soil. GMOs are going to ruin that, that soil because with GMOs, you have to put a lot of pesticides and herbicides so to damage the, the, the weeds and the other plants around. The soil health is tied to the health of the crops and the health of the people. It's a totality. That is wellness. Uh, this is a really uh, interesting conversation. Dr. Patrick Jewel, we can't thank you enough for coming uh, here today uh, to have this discussion. I'm sure you continue this with your half hour show and, and whatever. Uh, and, and again, let's uh, keep the conversation going along front. Thank you very much thank for you, opening sir. this for us on genetically modified crops and foods here in Nigeria.